Okay, so we're going to choose James of the Garden. James and I head out to the garden. It's been years since I've been in the small field. The gazebo was smaller than I remembered, but I'd grown since I'd last seen it. James rolled up his sleeves and took in a deep breath of air before sighing contently. So, we need to cater to the plants and make sure there are no muddy spots in the grass. It may take a while. Are you sure you wish to help me and not the others? I shook my head, rolling up my sleeves as well. I can handle it. I'd rather work outside anyway. James nodded with a smile before handing me a warring can, dressed into a group of flowers by the side of the yard. I walked over and began to war the flowers. However, as silence took control of the air, I felt the need to start a conversation. So, do you like flowers? I wanted to smack myself. That was a terrible conversation starter. I mentally smacked myself before hearing James chuckle softly. I turned to look at him as he nodded. They have a wonderful aesthetic. Many people would think that flowers are simple and rather boring. But I've learned secrets about flowers. Secrets about flowers? What, like a special way to water them or something? You could say that. There are right and wrong ways to water flowers. Can you show me? James gave a small smirk before walking over and standing behind me. I instantly flushed as he brought his arms underneath mine, guiding my watering can. The water gently poured over the dirt, sinking into it and dissolving into the roots. However, my concentration on the water was broken by the sound of James's voice in my ear. Flowers need to be cared for gently, like a fragile light. Too much power and they'll break, but too little and they'll wither and fade away. It's like caring for a pet or a loved one. A loved one? For some reason, those three words echoed in my head. James continued to guide my warring can, using gentle hands to lead my arms and my body. It was almost like a dance. Eventually, he let go and stepped away from me. I turned to him as he simply smiled at me before returning to his work. I felt my face with my hand, feeling the extreme warmth before shaking my head and continuing to water the remaining plants. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple tracking the essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he invited the business partners and the executives of the Anderson Toy Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than their expectations. It was my chance for me to show my parents, for them to see me as a woman. It was my test to see if I really was ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubator to thank for that, but even so, I didn't have them taking care of me. A knock on the door broke me out of my thoughts. Who is it? Hey, are you okay, Amir? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Uh, well, I'm ready, you but... What? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. All right. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi and Susan's faces turn from smiles to complete awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Thank you. Yeah, you look amazing. Thank you Where again. Where did you get that dress? This whole thing? I've had it for a while. I just didn't wear it till now. Ha! It's very old. I stepped out of my room and closed my door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Oh, yes, they do. Yeah. I'm slightly taken about how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gel and even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the stairs with Zuzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face flush but quickly held my head up high. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down the final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So... Are you prepared for tonight? No. To be honest, no. I couldn't feel confident at all. Something that tonight frightened me. I couldn't tell if it was the fear of my dad, or the guests, or my dad, or... Yeah, it's just my dad, really. We'll leave it at that. 
The other boys smiled reassuring at me, which made me feel a little bit better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rung. I gulped. I could proud to feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide to reveal my parents both dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They were okay with it. Really? I looked to the boys and noticed Sam and Eric were staring and telling my parents they must be using their powers. They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. Sure they did. Mom quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug and I hugged her back. I really miss my mom in a perfume. All these damn welcome me reading everything as they show. Gorgeous. You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground waiting for him to look at me, and when he did, he let this small smile grace his lips. And Your mother's smiling. right. You look like you're all grown up. I am grown up, father, if you haven't noticed. My mother was grinning ear to ear. I was beyond speechless. My dad had complimented me. It's the end of the world. Thank you, daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? What do you mean, what guests? The entire board from Anderson Toys is oh. coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son you. will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. Quit. To become CEO of the company. Just what I've always wanted to be CEO of the Anderson's Toy Company. Thank you, Daddy, for this opportunity. Invite everyone to invite the queen or the king. Oh well. I wrote to Naomi and Susu and they gave me a thumbs up and the boys were, you know, doing what they normally do. Uh, I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men, women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it well behind a small smile and handshake. Remember... Tell them what they want to hear, not what you want to say. <gasps> oh boy, here we so, go. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Ah, uh, it's been pretty good. I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Thank you for coming. Do you have college plans? Um, yes, I do. The Questions came up one after another, and some weren't even about me, they were about what the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? Um, it's hard to say, I'm not an executive. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? It's a policy of my own. the company should expand from just toys? It's a toy company, why? Eventually, the question stopped and I was back to being myself. Naomi and Zeus were mingling in the crowd with the incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think, but at least I wasn't being questioned on left, right and centre. And suddenly, though, my mum pushed her way through the crowd to bring along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. With mom stood a man who looked only a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Oh, so people are asking, are we doing Andrews, right? Yes, I will be doing Andrew. As I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed on my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled to both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh promptly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. He used Why? to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. 
Lucky me. Oh well, I didn't know he told about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I knew to Andrew had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I wasn't able to find out. I felt someone walk up beside me, caused me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cool stare to Andrew, who sat so, the game tense. So, you're Jared's son. Uh-oh. Andrew's body twisted, twitched slightly. Uh-oh, looks like he's been found out. Daddy saw him. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well, well you didn't say that when you came up to me. I said, Andrew, this guy wants to take my grandfather's place as CEO. So the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm Sorry. merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wow. wrong with that. Of course not, sir. <laughs> and polite as well. Interesting. <laughs> if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. They put. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd towards the back of the house. I was worried, but I gave him his place. He obviously needed it after that. <laughs> He's not CEO material. Oh, boy. That's because you practically interrogated the young man. Exactly. No questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make this scene with my dad. One wrong move and he'd be lecturing me in front of everyone. That was not something I wanted at my housewarming party. I let her aside before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight. Me and the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze and looked out the window and saw a limo pull up. Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, that must be Lewis's car. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. Yes, Mom. Mom left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held his simple smile as he thanked every person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak, though. Eventually, only Zuzu, Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing on my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Oh my god, it's the end of the world. Thank you, Daddy. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Never mind what I said. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. Oh. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. All four of the remaining guests left the building, all but my dad waving back to me with the last of the guests gone, I sighed and saw on the staircase as I said, Phew, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Give her a break, man! She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Ugh. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Hi, Malex. How you been? You sound great, mate. Dancing with your voice. No, you haven't. You're still a cackling maniac, as always. 